Greetings, this is Dyslexi from the Armor Community Group, Shack Tactical. In cooperation with Bohemian Interactive, I'm creating a series of videos to explain some of the basics of Armor 3. Today, we'll be talking about flying helicopters in Armor 3. We'll go through the basic flight principles of helicopters as they pertain to Armor 3, starting with a takeoff and ending with a successful landing. If you'd like to easily practice helos by yourself, simply launch Armor 3, go to the editor and load a terrain, then double click on the map to place a unit. Select the type of helo you'd like to fly and position it at a suitable takeoff site. In this case, we'll use an MH9 Hummingbird as they have a great field of view and are excellent for training purposes. Once you're in your helo, there are a few aspects of the interface you should familiarize yourself with. In the upper left, you have a panel that will show altitude in meters, speed in kilometers per hour, fuel remaining, as well as the damage states of different aircraft components. From top left to bottom right, these are your hull, engine, instruments, anti-torque, which is also known as your tail rotor, and your main rotor. Red indicates that a system is destroyed or close to it, while shades of yellow and orange indicate damage. To power on your helo, press your Q or Z key by default. These control what's known as a collective. In short, this makes you ascend or descend. Your helo will take a moment to spool up. When it's ready, tap your Q key a few times to come into a low-level hover. Hovering is a critical part of being a helicopter pilot. Not only will you need to be able to hold a hover from takeoff, you'll also need to know how to decelerate from normal flight into a hover to facilitate landing. Use your mouse for fine-grained control of pitch and low-speed yaw, while your W, A, S, and D keys will control more significant amounts of pitch and roll. X and C will act as your rudders, which allow you to do a level turn like so. You can fly just fine with only a mouse and keyboard. Joysticks and other peripherals are optional. If you'd like to improve your flying, there are two good ways to do it. The first is via a track IR head tracking device, which allows you to look around independent of your other flight controls, while the second is a set of rudder pedals to give you more fine-grained rudder control. Once you've established a decent hover, transition into forward flight by tilting the aircraft forward. The more you tip forward, the faster you'll accelerate, though you'll also begin to descend in altitude once you pitch too far. You can counter this by applying more collective via the Q key or by raising your nose again. Raising the nose substantially will result in a climb, while lowering it will result in diving flight. Due to the airflow over the aircraft, you'll find that your tail rotor becomes less influential at high speeds. While you can still yaw somewhat, you'll no longer be able to do a full tail rotor turn until you've slowed back down again. Maneuvers at high speed will instead rely on banking the helo and using pitch to change direction. Your flight altitude will depend largely on the terrain, obstacles, and enemy threat in any given area. Helicopters are able to maintain extremely low-level flight with an experienced pilot. This can allow them to stay behind terrain or obstacles to mask them from enemy fire or observation. When flying low-level, keep a sharp eye out for anything in your flight path. Power lines are nasty surprises, but you'll also be at risk of hitting poles, trees, and even particularly large rocks that happen to be in the way. When planning your flight route, pay attention to the terrain in the area and what threats might be present. Plan for both enemy presence and natural or man-made obstacles, and fly accordingly. As long as we're in the air, let's diverge for a bit to talk about some of the basic techniques for helicopter weapons employment. We'll use the AH-9 Pawnee for this. It's the same basic airframe as the MH-9, just with the troop carrying benches replaced with mini guns and rockets. Both of these are fixed forward, presenting unique challenges compared to aircraft with swiveling turrets like the Blackfoot. The most important thing to remember when using the Pawnee's guns or rockets is that you must be able to fire them from a safe distance. You have no real significant armor on your aircraft. A burst into the cockpit or engine is enough to bring you down. Because of this, you'll want to attack from range, then peel off before flying over the enemy. The miniguns have a tremendous amount of ammo in them. Feel free to use several second long bursts when firing them. The further away you are, the more the bullets will spread out during your flight, making a hit against enemy troops much more likely due to the larger impact area. Rockets, on the other hand, should be fired sparingly. Be precise with them, and you'll find yourself doing far more damage in the end. A single rocket is enough to destroy any infantry target and potentially disable or destroy light vehicles. 
while a few can knock out several heavier vehicles. Avoid salvoing large numbers of rockets at a time, it's inefficient. In short, don't get greedy. A cautious attack helo pilot is much more likely to make it out of a fight alive than one who takes unnecessary risks. Now that we've gone over basic flight and weapons employment, let's try landing. To slow down, utilize a combination of pitching your nose up while decreasing the collective. If you match these two movements, you'll find yourself slowing down and without gaining or losing altitude. I call this a bleed flare, since you're bleeding your speed off without changing altitude in the process. When closing on your landing zone, it's best to fly a slightly curving path towards it. This allows you to get a better understanding of the lay of the land, any obstacles nearby, or where you might find the best place to touch down. Once you have a good feel for it, pick a spot and fly towards it, descending and slowing as you draw closer. You should be able to maintain 70 to 30 kilometers per hour of closure during your final approach and still easily and rapidly come to a hover. Be careful not to overcorrect too much. You should be thinking ahead a few seconds of your movements and taking into account the delays involved in maneuvering the aircraft. The larger the aircraft, the more of a delay you'll find. You'll see that it's possible to touch down while still having some speed. As long as the terrain is clear and you're reasonably steady, a touchdown at low speed will be just fine. The key part is your vertical descent rate. You'll want to tap your Z key as you make the final descent, such that you touch down with the minimum of vertical speed. Once you've made a successful flight from start to finish, the best thing to do is to look back at what went right, as well as what you think you need to improve on. There's no shortcut to becoming a good armor pilot. Practice is the key. Start with the basics, work to refine them, and challenge yourself more and more as you gain proficiency. Ensure that you build upon solid fundamentals and don't rush too deeply, too quickly. Skill will come with time and practice. If you'd like more guidance on how to fly in armor to include auto rotation, coping with tail rotor loss, and various other topics, I recommend checking out my Art of Flight series, which you can find linked in my channel's playlist. For more community guide videos, be sure to subscribe to the official Armor 3 YouTube channel. For other Armor 3 updates, keep track of the official website, Facebook, and Twitter pages. If you'd like more in-depth tutorial and multiplayer gameplay of Armor 3 and previous Armor games, I'd also recommend you check out my channel, here. This is Dyslexi, and I'll see you on Altus.